Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and today we are going to finish up this series talking about replacing a standard Bosch cube style relay with a solid state MOSFET. This Bosch style cube relay really is a workhorse in most automotive applications, but it isn't the only solution when you want to switch something. I've talked about using a MOSFET in several videos now. The first application I think I showed used a MOSFET and a few resistors. Basically, we need a gate resistor and a pull-down resistor to kind of uh, drive an N-channel MOSFET on low side. Low side switching in automotive isn't always all that great because usually the thing you're trying to power is connected to ground, so you want to switch the power side or the high side. So I showed a little bit more of a complex one. So we had a high side switch here with an actually uh, N channel switching the P channel. So then we have a bunch more components and it starts getting more complex. But we talked about this does not have much protection. So if you had an inductive load like a fan or a pump or something like that that you were driving, this is going to be problematic. Also spikes in voltage, Lots of things make this not ideal. So then we add some more stuff to make it, I guess, more ideal. And then you end up with something like this, where you've got an opto-isolator, and you've got a driver, and you've got some diodes. And again, it's starting to get far more complex. It's on a breadboard, which makes it a little bit... Uh, bulkier than it would be if it were on a circuit board, but it does start to get more complex. This is still a P channel, and so they don't switch very fast, therefore they get really hot, because a FET heats up as it's switching. The longer it takes to switch, the hotter they get. You also want something that has a very low VGS resistance, and that typically you have better ones in N channel than P channel. If you want to build something that's even more tolerant of heat and EM noise and things like that, you end up getting, you know, up into this range. And now it's just starting to get really bulky and really ridiculous. We've got a heat sink. We've got capacitors to decrease EM noise. We've got all of our gate stuff. We've got a driver. We've got a TVS diode to protect it from uh, transients. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. And this is just for the switching. When you look at all of this and you compare it size-wise and complexity, relays certainly look way, way more appealing. So why would we go through all the effort of using something like a MOSFET? Well, keep in mind that the MOSFET is actually inside here, and most of this is just package. This is also a MOSFET. This one is designed to stab through holes, and this one surface mounts. But let me show you what happens when you move to something like this. Through the magic of, well, technology, you take all of that crap that I had on that board, and then some, and you put it all in these little components, and you have overcurrent, a voltage sensor, over temp, it looks for, it can actually measure the current. It's got the driver inside. It's got an internal power supply to make sure that your gate and source voltages uh, are in the correct proportion so that they can be driven. And this really just has an input, tell it to turn on or off. The switch voltage that you're driving, so battery voltage, 12 volts on a car. The output, so when in goes high, output goes high. We have these additional things that you don't have to use. This IS is actually our output of the current, so you can measure current going across this while it's running. And then we have to have a ground as well. So if we go back and look at that part, you can see this part, it has quite a few pins, but really all three of these are the output. And this tab up here, the entire back of this is the in. So the voltage comes in from the battery through there and out here. This part can easily do, uh, if I take a look back at the data sheet, you can see this thing can switch up to 48 amps of power. 
far more than any of the things that I'm typically working on. Why would we choose this MOSFET over a relay? There are a few different reasons. Number one, there is a size difference and these, once you build a board, can be a bit smaller, especially if you're doing multiples than relays. One of the places these things really excel is in switching speed. So turning this on and off can be done down in the nanosecond range, whereas turning this on and off is tens to hundreds of milliseconds. The place where that makes a difference is if you're trying to drive something with a PWM, so pulsed width modulation. So if I want to turn something on and off real quickly to simulate uh, an analog voltage. To give you a concrete example of something like that, here is an automotive glow plug. This is used in a diesel. I can provide direct power to this if I give this 12 volts. This thing will suck about, eh, from cold, it draws about 15 amps. As it gets hotter, the current that goes through it goes down. But once it comes up to temperature, it really does not need full power, so you can turn it on and off really fast. And if you give it a duty cycle of, say, 50%, you're only going to provide half the current and it will stay hot. The entire purpose of me going through all of these was I wanted to build a controller to control six of these for a six cylinder diesel engine. So once you take all of the stuff that is required for this and put it on a board to control a glow plug, you end up with something like this. Now, obviously this is fairly large, but we have our microcontroller and a power supply, and this is power supply stuff. Really the switch is just this area here. So we have that MOSFET, a couple of capacitors for noise, a capacitor for charge, and then I've got some resistors to, you know, make sure that the state is where I want it to be and so that it doesn't have any uh, draw that we don't want it to have. This is kind of the uh, minimal set to make this work. The other nice thing about this, this thing is automotive rated. So it can be used in automotive applications uh, for heat, temperature, vibration, all of that. I have this wired up right now where I have 12 volts in. And this is our ground here. This goes out to the glow plug right here. And then this ground wire back here comes back to ground as well. So what I've done is I have some logic in this microcontroller that turns this on when it starts up. It will turn on the glow plug for five seconds, bring it up to operating temperature, and then it will pulse it at 50% for another 10 seconds, and it can be up to 10 seconds, to maintain temperature. It actually looks at the current going through the glow plug to determine the temperature of it, so that if you're running in a hot engine, the glow plug actually runs for less time. So what happens, let's just give this a try here. If I power it up, the microcontroller turns on, and the glow plug gets nice and toasty. That thing's probably about a thousand degrees right now. And then it's gonna taper off and shut off. That was drawing 15 amps of current through here. And look, I can put my finger on it. It's maybe a little bit warmer than room temperature, but I don't think, it, it, if it is, it's only a couple of degrees. This did not get hot, pushing enough current to get that thing up to, you know, a thousand degrees. 15, 16 amps of current through here didn't even get warm. And then when you take six of them, put it together so that you can drive all six cylinders, you end up with something like this. Now this one is specifically designed so that I can drive glow plugs, but really this is just six independent switches. So I could drive headlights, a fan for your radiator, etc. from this. This one's designed to go through uh, up to 20 amps per channel. And really that, if you look at this, and if you had six of these along with their connectors, I don't know that we've uh, lost much in space. It's about the size of six of them, 
Plus I have a microcontroller that I can control the logic of when they're turning on and off. And this is the power supply that conditions automotive voltage to the five volts that this needs and protects us against things like reverse polarity and things like that. So while this series may have been a little bit of a long winded way of showing how to go from a relay to a MOSFET, you can see there are very valid reasons that you can't use these and a MOSFET works better. And in fact, these work in situations that a relay just could not operate. That's all I've got for you today. If you're interested to learn more about this board, I'll put some links down below. You can see the schematic for how it's built, uh, the source code for the controller, all of that kind of stuff is open source. And I'll put links in the description down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.